continue our study on factoring trinomials. We have, so far today, remember our flow chart, we always look for the greatest common factor in any polynomial, and then we count the number of terms. If there are four terms, we factor by grouping. And our most recent segment of videos was focusing on um, polynomials that are in three terms. Um, in other words, there's an x squared term, um, a, a x term and a constant, although that varied now that I think about it. You know, it might have been x to the fourth plus, plus a constant x squared, etc. But the big thing here was that um, in some of those trinomials, our a value, our coefficient of our x squared term was equal to 1, and in others of those, our a value was not equal to a 1. But like, what I'd like to talk about in this segment is trinomials that are called perfect square trinomials. Because if by chance you can see these, they're a quick factor. So um, it's not necessary, and they give a formula in all kinds of textbooks in terms of how to find the factored form of those perfect square trinomial trinomials, but I'm going to go without a, without a formula. Um, let's go ahead and show you some examples. So for example, the trinomial x squared plus 8x plus 16 has a 1 in front of the x squared term. That's the easy trinomial to factor because all we have to look for is two numbers whose product is the, the positive 16 and they need to add to be the 8. And that's a pretty quick find. That's um, 4 and 4. Those two numbers multiply to be 16 and they add to be 8. So when we factor that, we go ahead and put the x in the front of each of these binomials, because their product is x squared, and the 4, and the 4 is the latter part of that binomial, and if we foiled this, we would see that this x times x is the x squared. This 4x right there, and that 4x right there adds to be the 8x, and finally the 4 times 4 is the 16. This is called a perfect square trinomial because it factors into the same two binomials and we often just write it as that binomial squared. It's not necessary, but recognize that this and this are the same thing. So what I'm going to ask you to watch for when you look for a perfect square trinomial is, is there any chance you can take the square root of 16? Let's write that down. Can you take the square root of 16? And if so, so just look for a perfect square right here. And if that number, in this particular case, is doubled and gives you the coefficient of that middle term, then you have what's called a perfect square trinomial. This sign will always be a plus sign. This sign may not. Let's see if my... I'm going to do one more where they're both plus signs, and then we'll, we'll look for... Uh, one that has a middle term with a minus sign. So if I have y squared plus 10y plus 25, I'm kind of looking at that and going, wow, the square root of 25 is a whole number. I wonder if that's a perfect square trinomial. So I say to myself, geez, the square root of 25 is the number 5. If I double that value, I get 10. That's the coefficient of the middle term. I'm going to go ahead and write down this in factored form. I'm going to use a 5 in the back of each of these because their product is 25. And remember, they add to be 10, and I have the same two binomials in their factored form. And again, I might write that as y plus 5, that quantity squared. Now let's say that we have a problem where there's a minus sign right here. So I'm going to use uh, some different letters this time. So let's go with p squared minus 12p plus 36. Now you are just looking for two numbers whose product is a positive 36, and they need to add to be a negative 12. It's still, you know, what we've always done. And look, two numbers whose product is 36 and adds to be a negative 12, well, they both better have the same sign. They better have negative signs in order for those to add to be this negative 12. But again, I kind of ask myself, is the square root of 36 a nice integer? Is it an integer? And if I double that number, do I get either a 12 or a negative 12? And in this case, since I have the negative 12, 
I'm not going to put positive sixes in there. I'm going to put minus sixes in there because they have to add to be that minus 12. Again, a perfect square trinomial. Now this works if the coefficient in front of the square term is also a square. So let's look at this problem. So I have 25 x squared. That's a perfect square. I can take the square to 25. Plus 70x plus 49. You know, previously, I uh, factored this by what's called the AC method. So I multiplied the A value times the C value. Yikes. And I looked for two numbers whose product is that big number and added to be 70. But if I could catch this before I, I got any further and I could say to myself, geez, what's the square root of 25? That's 5. What's the square root of 49? That's 7. Now the only trick here is, in the past, um, we just had to look at this number and double it. Now I have to take those values, 5 times 7, which is 35, and i got to double that and see if that's the middle coefficient. And so if that's the case, then I think I found the coefficient of my x term and my constant in each of my binomials. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 5x in the front of each of these because their product is 25x squared. I think I'm going to put a 7 in the back of each of these. I want them to multiply to be a positive 7, and I want the middle term to add to be a positive number, so I get to put plus signs in both of those. And let's just check this out and actually write it down and see if it works. So 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times 7 is 35x. 7 times 5x is another 35x. This is why we double that, those, those products. And then 7 times 7 is 49. And when I add these like terms, I do get the middle coefficient of my original problem, the 70x. And I'll bring all this down. And yup, this checks. That's the original problem. So this is the factored form of that polynomial. Um, let's do one more. Uh, let's take a look at a problem that's out of order. So let's go with 49 minus 56y plus 16y squared. So first of all, you're welcome to rearrange it. Absolutely welcome to rearrange it. And I would almost encourage it. So I would call this 16y squared minus 56y plus 49. And then I'd like to ask you, and let's assume this is a perfect square trinomial, what's the square root of 16? Four. So let's put a 4y in the front of each of these. What's the square root of 49? 7. Now I want their product to be a positive 7, but I want these inside and outside terms, which are both 28y's, they're both 28y's, I want them to add to be a negative 56, so I'm going to put a minus sign here and a minus sign here for those two to add to be a negative 56. And my answer would be this 4y minus 7, that quantity squared. There is one more I'd like to share with you. Uh, let's have um, multiple variables in our problem. And that problem is 4a squared plus 20ab plus 25b squared. Now this doesn't have any greatest common factors because that's an odd number. These are even numbers. This has only got factors of 5 and 5 in it, so I can't take anything out there. Ooh, I do notice that that's a perfect square. I can take the square root of that. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'm wondering if I could put a 2a in the front of each of these. Oh, look over here at the back. I wonder if I could call these two terms right here 5b, because the square root of 25 is 5. So I might put a 5b here and a 5b here. Um, again, you know, let's, let's come over here. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 25 is 5. When I multiply those two values together and then double it, do I get the coefficient of my middle term, this 20? 
And if so, it looks like if I FOIL this out, I'm going to need plus signs here because their product has to be a positive 25, and these inners and outers have to add to be a positive 20AB. Let's FOIL it just to check. So 2A times 2A is 4A squared. Oh, here's that 10AB. And look right here. Um, 5B times 2A is another 10AB. That's why we double the 10. And then 5B times 5B is 25B squared. And I'm going to collect these two like terms. They are the middle term in the original problem. And I can see that when I multiply this out, I do indeed get what I started with. Perfect square trinomials. If you can see them, catch them. It just makes things faster in terms of factoring.